There's this other school of thought that imaging might actually be bad for the long-term outcomes of back pain. Imaging, is it good or bad for back pain? Imaging is an umbrella term for x-rays, MRIs, and CT scans. It actually has a significant impact on the outcomes of back pain, whether or not you get imaging. So MRI may in fact facilitate the medicalization of lower back pain. You can see the damage really clearly. These things that the MRI is seeing, they could actually just be age related or degenerative changes. So as we get older, as our bodies age, we have degeneration that happens in every joint in our body. And so to be able to take a really high quality picture of an aging spine, and see damage, it might just be normal and it might not be appropriate to call it abnormality. So here's some data. People without pain, they have no back pain. 60 years or older, 36% had a herniated disc and over 90% had a degenerated or bulging disc. And so these people have no pain and they have what someone might be diagnosed with as a disease. This is a case study. And one guy is a 60 something year old man and one's like a 30 something year old man. So the images from the 62 year old male demonstrate significant lumbar de degenerative changes. He was contacted six months after his initial visit and noted that he had recently completed a two week backpacking hike of the United States Continental Divide and no back pain. This is the 32 year old spine. This almost looks pretty good. And he was off work for disability uh, with severe lower back pain. MRIs, relatively unremarkable. Here's the conclusion that we can draw. Clearly this patient's MRI results are not reflective of serious pathology, yet he continued to have lower back pain. Whereas the 62 year old male in our first example had the proverbial spine of an 85 year old and enjoyed a robust physical lifestyle. This story we just read, and there's countless stories, you know, trials of including thousands of people that are very similar to this, where the imaging has almost no correlation to the pain. The damage that we see has almost no correlation to the pain and the disability. A history of depression was more predictive of future lower back pain than in imaging studies. Now we're going to look at the harm that imaging can potentially cause. The potential harm associated with over imaging of lumbar spine in patients with lower back pain includes radiation exposure and labeling when patients are told they have an abnormality. So this is part of the harm of getting imaging. People get labeled. Oh, you're not normal. You have an abnormality and that labeling stamp it on your forehead, you carry it around with you in your life. You know this about yourself and it will affect your life. It will change your behavior. It will change your participation in, in life activities. This is like my main focus with you. When you get a diagnosis, when you get an image and you see your damage, it has an impact on you, whether you know it or not. There's a term for this. It's called fear avoidance behavior. And it's a huge problem in the back pain population with people who tend to avoid doing life things because of what they know about themselves and the pain that they feel and the damage they've seen. So this is based on research. It has negative effects for a doctor to take a picture of somebody's spine and look at the damage and say, you have this damage in your spine. It worsens the outcome. For example, herniated disc, degenerative disc. If you find that, if you get told that, if you see that, it's very hard to reverse the effect that that has on your mind, okay? A patient will typically focus on this as the source of the problem. We cannot let these diagnoses that we receive make us think that we are broken, that we are not normal. What they mean is we are normal. People who have no back pain at all, over 90% of these people will have a diagnosable condition of their spine with no pain. And yet there are people who have severe pain, like the 32 year old who had a more or less unremarkable image of his spine with severe pain. So the correlation is unreliable at best and we cannot allow the diagnosis of the imaging to make us feel broken or that we have a bad back. By the way, if you're enjoying the stream, hit that like button, support this channel, support this movement of core balance training. 
And if you haven't subscribed, if you subscribe, you'll get notified. When imaging would be warranted, when is it a good idea? When you have severe, unrelenting pain that it does not go up or down depending on what you do with your body because it's not a result of what you do with your body it might be a result of a growth on your spine and there is one situation with a physical back problem that you would want to get imaging and that would be if you are experiencing loss of the use of your legs or feet that could be indication of a nerve getting pressed on that controls those muscles those are the times when it might be beneficial to get imaging. And the solution is still gonna be the same. Strengthen your supportive musculature around the spine to better support the spine. And if you can avoid getting imaging because you're not showing red flags for cancer, then don't get imaging. Beliefs influence our behavior. If I believe I'm broken, I'm going to change the way I move. I'm gonna try and protect myself when I move, but those protective tendencies change our muscle patterns and our movement patterns, and that, create, that leads to abnormal movement patterns, and that leads to the muscle imbalances that I teach in the masterclass. If you haven't seen the masterclass, it's in the description below. Uh, there's a link to the masterclass where you can learn about muscle imbalances and how they result from abnormal movement patterns. Fear avoidance behavior. It's a huge problem in the back pain world where people have a fear of hurting themselves. So they change the way they move. They avoid activities. They don't do life and they don't do the things they enjoy. Depression and anxiety go up. We call that a spiral. It's the downward spiral of back pain. The pain goes up with it. Beliefs influence our behavior and they also influence our outcomes. We have the placebo. Any treatment to a human being is influenced by what we believe about that treatment. Like acupuncture, there's studies to show that people who believe in acupuncture are helped by it and people who don't believe in it are not helped by it. The nocebo is the opposite of a placebo and that's the result of imaging. If you get an imaging done and it shows you the damage, you believe in worse things about yourself, you will experience worse things about yourself. Believe in yourself. If imaging doesn't help and maybe hurts and belief definitely has an influence on our lives, then why don't we harness belief instead of imaging? Let's harness the power of belief. You are not broken, you are strong. Your images do not determine your life. Wherever you are, I hope that something that you learned today will help you move a little bit more confidently because that movement with confidence can have a positive impact on your future. Extremely powerful just to simply change the belief about yourself while you're moving. I'm gonna reach to grab this cup Am I going to do it in a protective way so I don't hurt myself because I'm weak and damaged? Or am I going to do it with confidence because I know that I'm strong? I'd like to inspire you guys to reflect on your own imaging and what were the results of that imaging? And did it change the way that you lived your life afterwards? Did you receive a diagnosis? Let me know. Have you received imaging?